David joining the stream and I'll do a very quick intro and hand it all over to David himself to go through. Uh, so we've got David joining in. He's an independent data architect and a data consultant and he'll be talking about Azure Cognitive Service today. Um, with that, I won't take up too much of your time, David. I will leave you go and run your show all together and I will jump right off. Thank you. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, everybody. So let's uh, kick off. Before we start, actually, a couple of things. Uh, I should I put a few links there in the chat of the event. Uh, we're going to be using those resources today. And first of all, uh, don't forget to get involved. Uh, try to get involved with your local community or with the local community. Sorry, the online community is really important uh, now more than ever to stay together and to continue sharing our knowledge between each other. So let's get started, right? Today we're going to be talking about the Conversation API. The Conversation API in a nutshell is going to transcribe conversations to text, right? So as you know, the Azure Cognitive Services, they have different categories and different APIs that you can take advantage of. It's a cognitive services, pretty much is a set of AI pre-built models that you can take advantage of and start using them. So the conversations, transcriptions, API belongs to the speech category. So within the speech category, we have a, the speech to text APIs. And within those APIs, you have a real time speech to text, batch, a speak to a speech to text. You have a multiple device conversation. You can create your custom speech model. And now you have the conversation transcription APIs. This comes with amazing features. So some of the features that you can think of. First of all, uh, this APIs is API allows you to use any of the languages available in the speech to text. That means that you can you have more than, I think, 70, 80, more than 100 languages that you can use. Then, of course, you get the transcriptions. Uh, you're going to get the timestamps. Uh, you can get the user profiles, the, the, the voice identification. We're going to cover that today, the voice signature. Um, therefore, the speaker identification. So you will know, as part of any conversation transcription, who said what and when. You can do. You can go and use this API using different methods. You can use the real-time method. You can use as well the batch method, the synchronous, and you can even combine. So that's pretty much a, that was the what. That's what the conversation transcriptions API is. Now let's go and move to the why. So when you think about use cases. Uh, up front, you might be thinking about, okay, we're going to transcribe meeting conversations to text, right? And that's really useful. And I worked in consultancy for 10 years, and I'd rather spend my time uh, trying to understand my, my clients' uh, challenges than taking notes. So that's really useful. Another use case could be, for example, the traditional, the call center, right? So if you want to transcribe a conversation between an agent and a client, so now you have the tools to, to not only to transcribe, but to also know who is saying what at which point of time. But I want you to, to think out of the box. The main, the main idea, the main uh, use case for this service is actually to empower people with auditory differences. That's the key and the main use case. And when you start thinking about that, uh, the sky is the limit. You can come up with so many use cases, so many solutions. So that's what you need to think about. So think out of the box. Uh, think about uh, uh, inclusion, helping people. Now, let's go well move to the how it works. So remember, in a nutshell, we're going to be using some APIs, uh, some pre-built models created by, by Microsoft. And that's going to, we're going to send another file, and that's going to come up with a response. So in this picture, you can see at the top layer, pretty much we have a Microsoft Array. So that will be the Microsoft Array within a, a, within a meeting, within a call center a conversation. Then we're going to send that uh, audio file 
to the speech services. And at the same time, if we want to do user profile and speaker identification, we need a voice signature. So before we can identify a speaker, we need their voice signature. So we'll send those audio files as well to register our speakers. And then the output uh, in the backend, Microsoft is going to do all the magic for us with Azure Cognitive Services. But the output will be pretty much the transcription of the conversation, as well as the speaker identification. Now, this service is in preview, and it, it does have a, a few limitations that we're going to overcome in the coming months. So I need to highlight them. So this service at this stage is only available in, on, in four regions. And remember, it's a public preview. You can go and create the service, and you can run the service for free as many of the cognitive services, there's a free tier that you can use. Um, it does require some specific devices that uh, you need to use. So if you're thinking about using your home microphone, that might not work. So you need to use a specific microphones. If you're, you're trying to do the, the, the input from a Microsoft, microphone, but if you're using the batch transcription or the sync transcription, or even for the real time, you can also try with some uh, audio files. Although the conversation transcription API doesn't have any limit on the number of speakers that you have in a conversation, uh, you need to understand that it is optimized for, uh, for a group between two people and 10 people. OK, now. We have a really high level understanding on what the conversation transcription API is. Now, let's see if we want to get started with this. What are the main things? What are the things that you're going to need? As today, if you want to go and create the service, uh, the first thing is that you need an Azure service, right? So you need to go to Azure portal. You need to create the speech services under the Azure Cognitive Services and select the free tier. It, you can use it for free. And remember just to select uh, one of those uh, four regions that are available. Uh, I think East Asia, West US, East US, and, and one Europe. Then you'll need as well, uh, I do suggest go and get the samples from GitHub. You, you don't need to write any code. You, you can go to GitHub. I put the link in the conversation. So you can go and get the, the, a lot of samples for the speech services. If you are testing something uh, at home, I do remember to get this open source application, Audacity, that is going to help, help you transform the file formats. And the reason why I'm doing that, why I'm saying that, is because the other two things that you need are the voice signature. If you want to do a speaker identification, you need, the, you need an input file. You need to be, it needs to be a WAV file, 16 bits, 16 kilohertz, and mo most important is to be a single channel mono format. The file needs to be for with the voice of only one of the speakers. That's why we're, how we're going to do the voice signature. And the other file that you need, of course, will be the conversation file. So you need to have that conversation file between two speakers or multiple speakers. The only difference. Um, between this file and the signature file, the voice signature file, is that the conversation file needs to be in a eight-channel mono format. It's quite different. Um, let's go and jump into the demo. I'll stop sharing my screen. Um, we'll come back uh, to this soon. So let me share screen number two. And I can share if you, if you can read the screen up, please. Thank you. OK, so let's go and check this one from here, demo. As mentioned before, if you go to the GitHub repository, uh, you can get uh, the code from here, get the zip file. Then one of the samples that you have, uh, one, that, one that you unzip this file, Pretty much, you can navigate. Uh, you have samples for all uh, the APIs within the speech. But my recommendation will be to go to Quick Start, uh, choose the language that you prefer, and under the .NET folder, 
you see that we have a conversation transcription solution that we can open with Visual Studio. When you open the solution, you need to uh, fill, uh, populate a few fields, like the subscription ID, the key for the service, and then you need to have the files, right? You need to have the voice signature file and the transcription file. I didn't write any of this code, as you can see. This code pretty much was uh, available uh, open source in GitHub. So you need to, for example, select the language that you're going to transcribe. Uh, you need to select the files that you're going to use for the voice signature. In this case, uh, I have two users and I have a conversation that I want to transcribe. When I say a channel, you can see that here they recommend this needs to be a channel and the signature file needs to be a single channel. When working with Audacity, so you can easily uh, change the number of channels that you're using when you export the file. This is just another file. So when I go to export and export to WAV file, that, that's the format, format that needs to be. Um, we click save, 16 bit, and this is where it becomes important. Remember, voice signature file needs to be one channel. Uh, if this was a conversation, we need to put the eight channels. If you don't do this, your other files are not going to work with the, with the solution. Once that you put the solution there, pretty much, and the subscription key and the region, I wouldn't be worried a bit about copying this because I'm going to shut it down, shut down the service, but this is running for free. So we'll run this bit. And this technology is a technology that uh, Microsoft has been using uh, in any services. The, um, if you look at the, at the subtitles that you have at the bottom right now, if any of you, you have the subtitles enabled, that's the same technology that you can take advantage of uh, right now. So now it's going to start transcribing the, the file, one of the audio files. And you can see here that it's transcribing from, from the audio file. So we chose a, a fairy tale. My partner helped me uh, uh, how say, telling the story for some of the paragraphs. And you can see how uh, from that audio file, from that conversation, it's able to identify the speaker who said what and you're able to identify uh, the, the, the paragraph that is being transcribed. I want to stop this. So when you get the solution, uh, there are a few states of a conversation. So this states pretty much, you, you'll start transcribing. This is in real time. And then when it finished, it's going to offer you the final uh, transcription of a specific paragraph. So by default, you'll have the real time. So if I click this, uh, execute the solution again. You'll see now that for each one of the words, it's going to start transcribing uh, that audio file. We'll give it a, a few seconds. And now we'll do this in, uh, in more in a real time, real time fashion. The session started. So in the meantime, I'm going to drop this here. You can see now how the real time has started. But uh, remember, go and get this. This is available there for you to use. Uh, remember that you might want to create a cognitive services, a speech services uh, for free. Uh, you can use up to, I think, 5,000 APIs call per service. And hey. Uh, a few resources that uh, I shared with you at the beginning of the session. Um, remember, the sky is the limit. So the technology is there for you to use it. Now it's up to you to see what you do with technology. Akansha, back to you. Thank you so much, David, for that. And look at that. We've been on time every single session so far this is so great uh that was a really good uh, like i love the ending of like the sky's limit go do what you like it's a really really good ending to the session overall and keeping in with the whole theme of kind of accessible 
applications of AI. We've got so many coming up. So thank you so much, David. Feel free to hop on over. I don't think there's any questions at the moment, but if you want to hang around, you're more than welcome to. Otherwise, go. Thanks, everybody. Take care. Bye. And we do have some.